The final product of change strategy we're going to look at is global outsourcing. So we're looking at how to capitalize on opportunities in the future, not looking at the past. So this is proactive and we're looking at this category here, how and where we make the product. And we're going to talk about global outsourcing. We've actually looked at outsourcing earlier when we looked at redundancies, but it's basically where a business says we're not going to perform a particular task anymore. Or if we do, we're going to outsource it to another business to do for us. So that could be things like maybe just one person's job. We outsource that maybe a whole team and department, or maybe the responsibility for a whole market or region is outsourced to another business. So looking at a very basic example, once upon a time, pizza restaurants like Domino's, they had fleets of delivery drivers. Each delivery driver was an employee, they had wages, superannuation, payroll tax, you had to pay for amenities and facilities, very expensive. So pizza restaurants don't do that anymore. They do still have some drivers, but most drivers of Domino's pizzas work for other businesses, Uber Eats, Menulog, DoorDash, etc. Looking at a bigger example, most businesses have the, you know, the five sort of core functions that we looked at, human resources, IT support, operations, finance and marketing. So looking at Apple, for example, well, a lot of these are actually outsourced now. Who designs the Apple products? Apple employees. Who comes up with the technology? Apple employees, but in terms of who actually makes the product, well, that's done somewhere else. That's done in China by a company called Foxconn. Who does their financial reports and their financial statements? They might outsource that to a big accounting firm like KPMG. Uh, and lastly, who does their advertising? Well, a lot of advertising is done in-house, but they also hire advertising agencies. And what you're getting there is you're capitalizing. All Ogilvy does is marketing. You're capitalizing on their skill. All KPMG is, does is finance. You're getting the best possible skill. It makes no sense to do that inside Apple if someone else does it better and we can just hire them. So all we're talking about in this one is, well, let's talk about that on a global scale. So it's outsourcing is where we hire another business to make the goods and perform the services or the tasks that we used to do ourselves. Well, what's global outsourcing? Well, that's what then we hire foreign businesses to do this. So some examples, we could outsource the operations. We could get the product made in a foreign factory. Customer service, so if lots of uh, Australian businesses like Telstra, for example, have overseas call centers, you call from in Australia to get help, but it's actually going to a call center overseas, that's outsourcing. And also IT support, similar, when you need help, you often direct to do it in a call center overseas. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of doing this? Well, the best bit is you're going to get lower costs. Usually we outsource because it's cheaper, and if we outsource globally, it's usually much cheaper. Pass those savings on to consumers, so lower prices, we'll get more market share. Well, like in one of our previous strategies, we said, well, we capitalize on national competitive advantages. Some biz uh, countries are just better at doing things than others. If I want to get electronics made, I don't look in Australia. We're not good at it. We haven't done it for years. I go to China. They do it all the time. There's a big workforce of skilled workers who are good at it. Now, we can also... the like sort of just outsourcing bits of the business and keeping a lot of it here, we can still maintain operations in Australia. So we've still got a big business infrastructure in place. We're just sort of outsourcing bits that maybe someone else could do better. But we keep our sort of Australian infrastructure in place. What's bad? Well, we've got to, how do we know who a good overseas, say, call center business is? How do we know? We've got to find them. We've got no experience in that market. That makes it really difficult to find someone. We also have exchange rates, so we're going to have to pay these people in their currency. So now we're going to have exchange rate losses. Also, tariffs and taxes, depending on what it is, we might get something sent back to Australia and we have to pay a tax on it. The cultural language barriers are always the big ones. So we might be dealing with people who don't speak our language and have completely different car sort of customs and a completely different culture. And also the time differences, trying to communicate can make be difficult as well. But probably the biggest thing with outsourcing is you get all these benefits like lower costs, but you do lose control. You're getting someone else to do something for your business in your name, but you're not doing it yourself. So you lose control. And it's really difficult to coordinate that if you've got lots of other businesses performing different tasks for you. Someone's got to maintain control over all that, and that can be really difficult.